At that time, Zechariah, father of John, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us, that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and in righteousness before him, all our days and you child will be called the prophet of the most high for you will go before the lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our god whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, what is the difference between a house and a home? House is a building or a structure. Home is a place where people come together to stay in that place. It can be a couple, a father and mother with their children, or children staying with their parents and grandparents, grandparents staying with their grandchildren. A building, a house becomes a home when people all come and stay together and the community of grace is formed. In today's first reading, my sisters and brothers, King David, along with all the house of Israel, brought up the ark of the Lord to Jerusalem with great rejoicing. His heart burned with love for the Lord God of hosts, when he experienced peace from his enemies, his zeal arose to build a house for the Lord. And we heard in the first reading the dialogue between the prophet Nathan and King David, a changing of sides and a great turnaround which becomes the central biblical theme of grace, election and divine initiative. Like David, we think that we have to do something to prove ourselves to God, to build God a house. And always, God turns it around and says, No, David, let me build you a house. We are just a day from Christmas, my sisters and brothers. And we are thinking that we are building a house, a heart for the Lord. It is time to let the dialogue of David soak into our minds. It will prepare us fully for the day ahead. It is God who will build his house for. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. We hear this in Psalm 127 verse 1. And thus David's house, kingdom and throne would be established forever. That is a royal kingdom. Jesus Christ is the ultimate fulfillment of this promise. Jesus, the Messiah, springs from the royal stock of David. God's covenant owed to Abraham nears its fulfillment in the preparatory role played by John the Baptist's parents. Even their names symbolizes that God remembers, that is, Zacharias, his oath to build a house. The name Elizabeth means house of God and will soon fulfill it through the mission of John the Baptist and Jesus. 
John's occasion is closely linked to Jesus, yet their titles distinguish between them. John is the prophet of the Most High and Jesus is the Son of the Most High. So my dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, God's loving kindness prevailed in the life of King David right down to us until the end of times and then forever in the person of Jesus, God incarnate. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. A person who experiences God's mercy in one's weakness can only sing the praise of God. So this morning, let us rejoice in God's blessing and promises to us as the responsorial psalm. We replied, I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord.